it's my great pleasure to introduce Jody Levy. Jody is a researcher at the uh, Institute for Artificial Artificial Intelligence Research Institute, which is part of the Spanish Research Con Council. Uh, he has done a lot of great work in the context of SAT, MaxSAT solvers, automated deduction, higher order logics, and unification algorithms. And in particular, he has done uh, he has been a leader in the space of trying to understand the structure of industrial instances and uh, connecting that structure with potentially why SAT solvers might be efficient for uh, large industrial instances. So today he's going to talk about uh, formal characterization of industrial SAT instances. So without further delay, Jody, the mm -hmm. online forum is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Vijay, for the introduction. Uh, what I will explain today is uh, what we have done in the last 10 or 12 years in the formal characterization of the industrial set instances. That is more or less the time that I've been working in, in set. And uh, basically, uh, I will talk about uh, my work with Carlos and Sotegui, Maria Luisa Bonet, and my student, Jesus Giraldet. So uh, sorry if I talk basically only about our work. And uh, I will try to be very brief. So I, I will only explain the main results that we have got about the, this characterization of the industrial instances. And well, I, you can you can interrupt me during my talk, but I, I, I will ask you to interrupt by the microphone because I cannot see the the chat. So if you make questions in the chat, uh, I cannot see them. Okay, thank you very much. So if we want to answer the question of what is an industry of set instances, a set instance, so probably the, we, we have to answer the question of what is a random set instance before. So uh, when I started to work in, in SAT, there was uh, only one model of random set instances that was quite simple. It was the, the classical or the uniform model where what you do is to repeat M many times. So the number of crosses that you want to get, you sample K distinct variables with uniform probability so without repetitions of variables in this, so in this way you avoid the generation of, of, of uh, simplify, simplifiable uh, classes or, or tautologies. And then you negate each one of these variables with probability one half. This model has been studied by the theoretician so uh, we know a lot of, about the difficulty for uh, solving these this random instances. We know that they are difficult for resolution with high probability. For instance, we have studied the uh, phase transition point and many other properties. But to be honest, uh, these properties are of very little interest for practitioners. So I mean, for the people that uh, implement such solvers, because they don't help them to, to improve that such solvers. So if you make the question uh, to uh, uh, more practical people uh, of what is an industrial set instance, probably the best answer where you can get is that uh, a set, an industrial set instance is what you can get in the benchmarks of the set competition. So, the people who implement such holders were trying to do basically is to win the competition. So they take the benchmarks that you have in, in, in the repository and you try to make your such solver efficient uh, solving these this instances. When we work in this with these instances and we analyze them, so we take them as, uh, as the subject of interest that we want to analyze. Sometimes incomprehensible, uh, they insist on taking the last, uh, the, the instances of the last competition. So, but uh, it doesn't matter very much because you have to take the last solvers, but not necessarily the last instances because all of them are, are industrial in principle. 
So uh, one of the, when you consider these two kinds of instances, I mean, the random instances and industrial instances, one of the first problems you get is that the solvers either do well with the random instances or they do well with industrial instances. So the solvers that win in one of the tracks of the competition do very bad in the other track and vice versa. There is, of course, another problem that is that, that uh, probably there have been some kind of coevolution of these instances with the solvers. I mean, there's like a uh, evolution of the set of instances that we use to test the solvers and the evolution of the solvers. Because uh, when an instance is too easy for all the solvers, they are removed from the benchmarks. And when a set of instances of industrial instances is too difficult for all the solvers, they are also removed from the instances, for, from the bench, set of benchmarks. So probably what we get in the set of benchmarks is simply what we are able to solve with the modern subsolvers nowadays. So uh, from the point of view of somebody that works in theories and want to help the people working in practice, uh, there are many questions that can be of interest for, for the more practical people. Uh, the first question is, um, trying to characterize the difficulty of such instance. Oh, well, of course, all the work in, 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 the, in proof complexity tries to, to answer this, this question. But the problem is that we know that such solvers basically are basically based on, 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 on resolution. So if you have uh, proof systems stronger than resolution, it's not too much of interest for, 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 for the people doing that, that such solvers. So, um, sorry if I, I, I'm too provocative with my, uh, my <laughs> statements. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the questions that we tried to, to answer was to characterize the difficulty of set instance, of industrial set instance from a practical point of view. We know that there is one of these characterizations is the existence of backdoor. So there are a set of variables that once instantiated make the formula very easy. And this set of backdoor variables are, are quite reduced in practice. Here I will, uh, I will describe another characterization that is called hardness or tree-like refutation space. Then there is another question that is the study of the structural properties of these industrial instances. Here during my talk, I will introduce the scale for structure, the modularity and the fractal dimension of such instances. And finally, the third question that I will um, try to, to, to focus is the um, proposal of new models of random formulas that try to capture these uh, properties of industrial instances better than the uniform random model. So I will describe basically three models, the scale free set uh, random model, the modular random model and the popularity and similarity random model. So this is basically the index of my talk. And of course, at the end, uh, there is a fourth question that it's always the same. And it's the question that uh, I, we always get during my talks that is, uh, can be summarized as show me the money. So uh, how all this work can help me to improve the sub solver. So if you motivate, if our motivation was to try to help people developing sub solvers in practice, so uh, we have to show the, uh, some contributions and by the moment, uh, these contributions are very, very, very reduced. So uh, let's start with the first part of my talk that uh, will try to answer the first question, the characterization of how difficult is uh, set instance on practice. 
Um, we know that uh, on most industrial instances, there are a backdoor uh, set of uh, variables that when instantiated makes the formula trivially decidable. But the problem is that this set of backdoors is hard to find. But if you know that it is a reduced set, maybe it makes sense to try to find the set before trying to solve the formula. So it makes sense to use heuristics to decide which variables are more important to instantiate or to make decision on them. So we know that in practice, most industrial instances have a backdoor set that represents less than 1% of variables, even 1 per thousand of the variables of, of the problem. So uh, from a theoretical point of view, we, what we want to do is to find a measure and an algorithm that given a formula, uh, this measure describes the exponent of a polynomial algorithm from this, um, this kind of formulas. Of course, uh, the first measure that uh, comes to your head is the width, you know, that there are algorithms that work on, on, on time and to the width of the formula. But the problem so, is that- Jordi, can I ask a question? Algorithm. Yeah. Um, did you uh, get this one person number by, um, do you have a tool that computes the backdoor size? or uh, provides an upper bound on the backdoor size? Sure, uh, sorry? So you say on industrial, uh, uh, you said that in industrial instances there are backdoor sets of less than 1% of the variables, right? Uh -huh. um, I'm assuming that you have a tool that computes the backdoor size for industrial. No, no, uh, the competition of the backdoor size is, is, is hard. So how do you know so this? Yeah, so, so you have to do it by brute force and get an, an approximate upper bound for, for the size of the set. Okay, so I'm assuming you have a tool to do that. No, 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 no. Of course, it's, it's, it's a hard problem. But so you can use heuristics to, to find promising variables and try to uh, instantiate them and get an upper bound to the, set, to the size of this backdoor, but you cannot get the, the exact size of the backdoor. Yeah, but, but your, your approximation, uh, there must be a tool that computes this approximation. Yeah, 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 you, just, you simply use a, 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 a SAT solver for this purpose. So the SAT, the, the SAT solver, in fact, what tries to find the, the backdoor in some way because he tries to find the more promising variables to instantiate. This is what, what mm. it tries to say. You can modify the SAT solver to try to reduce the, the, the computed uh, backdoor set. But well, one, one, one percent of index, okay. So somehow you are able to say by running the SAT solver, then you're able to estimate the backdoor size uh, I still don't quite get how you do that, but anyway, let's take it offline. Uh, the other question is, uh, one person of a formula with a million variables is still quite large number of variables. Uh -huh. so, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. So you can estimate, for instance, using the SAT solver, you can estimate the number of decisions you have done and and the rest of variables are propagated. So this means that you only have to decide around 1% of the variables and the rest are propagated by unit propagation. Yeah, that's fair. But, but you have an experiment to establish this, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, it, it was done many years ago in 2007 by Carla Gomez, I think. Okay. Uh... So here I propose a little a distinct uh, measure. So, with the back doors, the problem is that the set of variables that you try to instantiate is always the same in all the branches of the, of the SAT solver. But probably you don't need to instantiate the same variables or to decide the same set of variables in all the branches of the SAT solver. So then the idea is, uh, let, let me introduce the straler of a tree. It's a very old notion for trees. The solid of a node of a, a single node tree is zero. 
and the structure of a tree is the if the for a binary tree if both uh, if both subtrees have the same structure then you have to add one to the structure of the complete tree otherwise you take the maximum of the structure of both trees in this way the trees with the structure one are exactly the caterpillars so they are aligned with only one branch in one of the sides the trees with the structure two are caterpillars with the with the, where the legs of the caterpillar are at the same time caterpillars and so on um the notion of uh, so then you can compute the strahler or the minimum strahler of our unsatisfiable formula as the minimum strahler of a tree-like refutation of the formula this is also called uh, the tree-like refutation space by Vincenzo Galesi and Esteban Anturan and was also called harness by Kuhlman in, in 2003. So it's a notion that it's, I think, quite natural and have been proposed by different people and in parallel, more or less. So uh, using this notion, uh, the set of form clauses uh, can be proved with uh, this kind of of refutation, so with a caterpillar refutation. So form clauses corresponds to the formulas that have Strahler one. And at the same time, uh, what you can prove with unit propagation only or with unit propagation is refutation of formulas with a Strahler one. So Strahler two, Strahler three corresponds to a little bit more difficult formulas than, than form clauses. Uh, the notion of a stroller of, or of a space tree like a space refutation or uh, hardness, whatever you, you name it, um, it has uh, nice properties. For instance, if you have the empty clause, then the stroller is zero. If you instantiate a formula, the stroller decreases. And for any formula, there exists an instantiation of one of the variables that strictly decrease the structure of the formula when this variable is instantiated by one of the true values. And the structure is the minimum measure that satisfies all these three properties. We have an old uh, algorithm that works on time n to the structure of the formula, is the mean Pitassi algorithm. And uh, we can also prove that the structure of a formula is smaller than the back door, that the size of the back door of variables. So it's um, more quite natural and, and in some ways uh, more appropriate measure than the, 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 the back door size. Any question? So uh, on practice, we have analyzed the uh, Strahler of some industrial instances. It was a work done more than 10 years ago. So we only used, uh, we used a such solver that was not using learning. So uh, there is not a, an extension or a natural extension of, of the, the notion of a Strahler for for refutation, for resolution, for general resolution, and for such solvers using learning. So, in this, in this, in this analysis of industrial instances, we use this this such solver without learning, and we uh, computed the structure of the refutation of the tree like refutation found by this such solver, and we found that the, the structure of the of most industrial instances. Is, is smaller than the one percent of the form of the variables of the formula. I have a question. Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, um, horn formulas always have Strahler one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. because unit one uh, unit propagation. Uh, so do you have a characterization of which formulas would have constant Strahler, constant with constant space? No, That's a good question. 
Yeah, no. So uh, any other no family idea. that would have constant shower, you don't know. No. Okay. Thank you. Well, probably I don't know, but uh, maybe there is an answer. <laughs> so let's let's start with the second part of my talk. That is the description of some properties that we have analyzed in industrial instances. So. Uh, we are talking about structural properties. So the first thing we do is with the industrial with the industrial instance is to transform the industrial instances into graphs, and we will use properties that have been studied for graph or for networks. So there are two ways to transform a formula into a graph. One is to consider a nodes for variables and for clauses and, and, and use the incidence graph that uh, describes when a variable occurs positive or negatively in a clause. And the other is uh, a graph where you only have nodes for variables and you connect two variables when there is a clause that contains both. So in some cases, I will use one kind of graph and in the other uh, the, the bipart this bipartite graph and in the other cases we will use the 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 graph that only contains nodes for variables so the first property we studied was the scale free structure of the set instances what we do what we did at that time was to analyze the instances used in the set 2008 competition so if you take all the instances in the competition and you saw, you put them all together and you sort the variables of all the formulas in the competition according to the number of occurrence, you get a representation like this one. So you discover that in that competition, most of the variables only occurs five times in the formula. But the average number of occurrences is 13 because there are a few variables that occur mil even millions of times in the formula. If you represent the number of occurrences uh, using double logarithmic axis, you discover that it approximates very close to a line. So this means that the expected number of occurrences of the why most frequent variable follows a power law distribution with an exponent close to 0 0.82. And at the same time, if you choose randomly uh, one of these variables, the probability that this variable occurs k many, many times also follows a power law distribution with an exponent close to 2.22. Uh, you can repeat the analysis. Here we have the analysis for the RT of the variables. So you discover that the RT of the variables or the number of occurrences of the variable in the bipartite graph follows a power law distribution with an exponent. Well, here it's with a different technique. We estimate the exponent into uh, 2.29 in, instead of 2.22. And also for the RT of the clause nodes that represents the size of the clauses, you also find that the sizes of the clauses also follow a, a, a power law distribution, but with a uh, little bigger exponent, uh, close to three or 3.03. .03. The tail of the distribution of the sizes of, of the clauses decays uh, faster than in the case of variables, probably because in the codifications you try to avoid huge or big, very big uh, clauses. So uh, the next natural question is what happens? when you try to solve the formula. So during the execution of the flat solver, is this scale-free structure modified? So it seems natural that if you have variables that occur thousands or millions of times in the formula, so the best thing you can do is to instantiate the, this, those variables because they make the formula decreasing very much. 
So what we did was uh, using one of the of the industrial set solvers, the mini set. We let mini set work for one thousand seconds, and we analyzed the formula after in after uh, in the longest of the of in the longest branch that has uh, analyzed the mini set during this uh, 1000 seconds. In this long uh, branch, there are a lot of variables instantiated. However, if we compare the distribution of the arities of the original formula with the distribution of the arities of the formula where a lot of variables have been instantiated, we observe that the, that the distribution is almost the same. So the solver does not try to destruct, to destroy the scale-free structure of the formula with instantiations. We know that the SAT solver also introduced new clauses during the search. So there is the learning. So we can also consider the original formula adding the learned clauses here in blue or the original formula plus the learned clauses instantiated. And we observe that in all the cases, the power law distribution is preserved. Even with the addition of the learned clauses, it seems that the power law distribution is reinforced in some way because the exponent of the power law distribution is, dec is, is decreased. So we can conclude that the in some way, the SAT solver tries to exploit this scale for destruction and does not try to destroy it. So even it seems natural to try to instantiate the variables that occur more often in the formula, it's not what the SAT solver tries to do during the search. And the addition of learned classes seems to contribute to reinforce this scale-free structure. So we can do just another experiment. We can start with a perfectly random formula, a uniform uh, generated with the uniform distribution. So here is the formula in red. So since the formula is a random formula generated with a random distribution with a uniform distribution, the arity of the variables decays exponentially very fast so there are the Jordi, sorry uh you'll have to speed up a little bit we don't you've already at the 30 minute mark oh sorry yeah please speed up a little bit thank you yeah so um what we observe is that uh using a, a, a uniform random formula the addition of learned clauses makes the formula scale free so even if the formula is not scale free, like in the random formulas, the learning tries to, 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 to make it uh, scale free. We have also analyzed the modularity of industrial formulas. The modularity is a notion used for graphs. It tries to find uh, the composition of the graph into subset such that the number of inner edges connecting uh, nodes in the same partition is high and the number of edges connecting uh, distinct partitions is, is low. Uh, the modularity can be defined as the number of inner edges divided by the total number of edges minus the expected number of inner edges for a random graph with the same degrees distribution. And Computing the modularity of industrial instances, what we observe here in blue is that the modularity is extremely high. So it's even for, uh, for real world uh, networks analyzed for, by other people, uh, the modularity is never so high like in the industrial instances that we use in the competitions. And the other thing that we observe is that it seems natural that the SAT solvers tries to destroy the clauses connecting distinct models and that tries to, to, to increase the modularity of the formula. 
But on practice, what we observe during the execution of the SAT solver is that the learning reduces the modularity of the formula. So somehow it's something that is not uh, taken advantage by the SAT solver. Probably because you, if you concentrate only in one of the models of the formula, this is not enough to prove the unsatisfiability of the formula. You have to consider several models of the formula. The other thing that we have studied about the initial instances is the fractal dimension. The fractal dimension here you have uh, is based on the notion of fractal dimension for a graph. The idea is if you have a graph uh, with self-similarity like this one, you can compute the number of tiles of radio air that you need to cover the uh, network. For radio one is just the number of nodes and for radio equal to the diameter of the network, it's just one tile. And you can compute the number of tiles that you need. This computation, of course, is NP-hard. So you, have, you, only, you can only compute an approximation of this number of tiles. And if you compute the number of tiles for different uh, values of the radio, and you observe a power law distribution, the exponent of this power law distribution of N of R in terms of R defines the, the fractal dimension of the network. If you compute the fractal dimension of a random formula, uh, you observe that the random formula in the um, in, in the percolation threshold. So random formulas have, in fact, have two phase transitions. One transition is the point, the, the fraction of clusters by variables that make the formula connected. This is the percolation threshold. And there is another threshold that is the fraction of clusters by variables that makes the formula unsatisfiable. So when this fraction for three CNF is close to 0 0.17, then the formula becomes connected and the formula has a fractal dimension equal to two. But when the number of clauses is close to the SAT and SAT um, threshold, then the formula has no fractal dimension and the number of tiles decrease exponentially with the, num with the uh, diameter of the tile. In the case of two CNF, the percolation threshold and the SAT and SAT threshold coincides. So uh, we have that in the in the in the in the phase transition in the SAT and SAT phase transition for two SAT, the formula is is is, is fractal. Jody, you have five minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, for industrial instances, uh, we observe that most of them have a fractal dimension in practice. We don't know the fractal dimension is between two and four, but we don't know how to exploit this property. And the learning does not affect the fractal dimension. And in the third part of my talk, I, I would like to talk about the models for generating set instances. I will describe basically three models. If we want to uh, generate a random scale free formula, there are two standard methods. One is the Barabasi Albert uh, preferential attachment method, the Cheng Lu configuration mo model. And we propose a third method that it's based on the use of hidden uh, variables. The idea is that to generate uh, our, a formula with a scale free structure, what we can do is to assign a different probability to each variable. If this probability follows a popular distribution with exponent beta, then what you get is a formula where the of the variables follows a power law distribution with exponent delta, and the delta and the beta are related in this way. Uh, analyzing the formulas that you get using this random generation method, you observe that in general, the percolation and the sat and sat phase transition decrease with beta. 
even it can get be, it can be zero in the case of Tursat, for instance, when beta is equal to one half. I think that uh, Ralph probably will talk about this model in this case for the fish transition analysis. And uh, we also observe if we compare a such solver specialized on industrial instance compared with the time required by a such solver specialized on random instances, we observe that we, when we increase the value of beta, so when we make the formula more uniform, uh, when the formula is very uniform, the such solver specialized in random is more efficient. And when the uh, formula is very scale free, then the solver specialized on, on industrial becomes more efficient than the other. So it proves that the such solvers specialized in industrial instances make use of this scale-free structure. Uh, we have also analyzed another model that is a model for generating random formulas with modular structure. I will not come into details, it's very simple. And in this case, we also observe that when we increase the modularity of the generated formula, these are random formulas, the solver specialized, the solver's glucose specialized in industrial is more efficient than the solver March that is specialized in random. So it's also that it's also an advantage for the industrial solvers. And if we generate a, a, a formula where the here is a formula with only 10 models and the variables between to uh, 900 and 1000 belongs to the same model. And we observe the decisions made by the solver along the execution. We observe that the solver tries to make decisions on only variables of a few of the models of the formula. So the form that solver tries to concentrate the decisions on the variables of, that belongs to one or just a few of the models of the formula. Finally, we have described another uh, way to generate a random formula that is called popularity and similarity. Uh, I will not come into detail, the details of the model. I just want to explain that uh, in this model, it has a this model has two properties. On one side, there are variables that are more popular than the others. This means that these variables occur much often than the others. And the, this model also captures the notion of locality. So there are variables that are close, closer to the others than others. And if we observe the execution of the search over along uh, sorting the variables according to the popularity, then we observe that the solver tries to make decisions on more popular variables, so on the on the variables that occur more often. But at the same time, if we sort the variables according to the how close they are one to the other, we observe that the decisions are made just on a few of these variables. So some way the sub solvers tries to choose to make decisions they try to choose those variables that occur more often but also the variables that are located closer to the variables that uh, were decided before just before so the solvers uses some kind of heuristics where they, it takes into account both properties of the of the formula the locality and the popularity of the variables well uh, that's all uh, thank you for your attention